About bloody time, too. Christine Morris? Yes. What kept Never you? mind, let's go. Nobody saw you? Nobody took any notice. Now hurry. What time will they find out? Well, not until roll call. We've got about an hour. Now please hurry. Put these on. What size are they? Your size. You were ten minutes late. Well, even in an open prison, you can't just walk out on the second. Now, just take me where you're supposed to. Give me the dress. And the shoes. You'll soon find that there. Well, then, they won't find it in my car, then, will they? this on. Is that really necessary? In case they broadcast your description. Put it on, they're my instructions. It's not going to match my eyebrows. Well, if they look that close, we've had it anyway. Yeah. The plain glass, you'll see okay. You can play, all right. Now, come on, let's get going. Yes, sir? Come in. Morris is in your section. Yes, sir. Sit down. Thank you, sir. What was he doing? Uh, routine observation. No, 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 no. I asked you what he was doing. Well, we heard they were going to burn the South African flag and Morrissey was on special duty. And it turned into a punch. Yes. And I've got an official complaint that Morrissey assaulted one of the demonstrators. Well, yeah, what do you expect with people like that? People like what? Well, sir, come on now. You know the kind. The usual mob. The political layabout. Look, I don't care who they are. I don't like complaints against officers in my department. Do you believe them? I wasn't there. Well, now, this is just a trial. And neither were you, were you, John? No, I was not, no. sir. It says here that this man, that Morrissey twice assaulted this man. The man complained at Bow Street that evening, and he's now sent a signed letter to the commission. Oh, he's wasting everybody's time. You don't seem very concerned, I Inspector. know Morrissey, sir. No, he's not very bright. What's he's he doing a... with us, then? What I mean is he's still learning. He would never hit anybody. You've never hit anyone? In self-defence. You've never lost your time? Not like that, no, never? sir. Never? All right. I want a full report from Morrissey. Yes, sir. Oh, and another thing. You were duty officer on Tuesday night. Yes, sir. But I see the duty book is signed by Inspector Richards. Yes, I switched with him. I'm doing his turn on Friday. Oh? On whose authority? Superintendent Eden always allowed it if it suited everybody. I don't like that. It doesn't suit me. The duty roster is not to be changed without my authority. Is that clear? Quite, sir. Look. If I need you specifically for a job on Friday night, you can't stand in for Inspector Richards, can you? Thank you, Mr. Jordan. What were we in for? Can they tell you? All the bloke said was to pick you up and drive you to Highgate. 200 quid down, and another 300 when the job's done. Friendly, aren't you? What'd they give you? I guess. What for? Drugs? Forget it. I thought he was a foreigner. Who's that? The bloke to fix this up. He, uh, he didn't sound English. Yes, yes, yes. 
pile of stuff you wanted, sir. Oh, fine, fine, fine. Morrissey, watch yourself. I beg your pardon, sir. Superintendent Inman. Oh. By the book. Yes, sir. Have uh, you done that report yet? Yes, sir. You are a bloody fool, yeah? Tell me something now. How many demonstrations have you been on? Lost count, sir. And you still haven't learned to keep out of these punch-ups? So it wasn't like that. I this don't... Fellow... I don't care what it was like. Just you watch your P's and Q's, that's all. Yes, sir. Well, go on, then. Have you seen anything of Superintendent Eaton, sir? No, he's at the home office. Yes, I know. Well, it's just that things are a bit different round here now, sir. Mr. Inman's taken over. Yes, sir. Get used to it. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Ah, it's you, Morrissey. You finished? Yes, thank you, sir. Leave us, will you? Look, uh, has he finished his report? Uh, be on your desk, very soon. This is priority. There's been an escape from Grafton Hill Open Prison. Prison? What, are we concerned with prison? Well, we are in this one. Christine Morris? Oh, dear. According to this, she was missing at roll call. How'd she get out? She walked out. Some idiot will put her in a prison without bars. No, what I mean is, is there any evidence of outside help over there? Only what's there. Prison security and the county force are onto it. Who arrested us? Uh, Whitney Schroiker affair. Whitney? He's in Cardiff. You take charge of it. Yes, sir. No, I start of the prison. You won't find her there, of course, Mr. Jordan. You're not some Ponson's girlfriend, are you? Thank you. No offence. It's 12.30 and here are the news headlines. A widespread search is going on in South East England for Christine Morris, who escaped from Grafton Hill Women's Prison earlier today. Ms Morris was serving a five-year sentence for offences against the Official Secrets Act. Airports and harbours have been given her description, and Scotland Yard Special Branch has been informed. In the motor car dispute, 5,000... Airports and harbours, eh? You just get me to Highgate. If they're going to all that trouble, you must be pretty big time. There's no reward, you know. If I'd known what you were, I wouldn't have touched this job. Still, I suppose a job's a job. Listen, just you remember that. What's this? Blast! It's a bloody roadblock. What else can we do? Hold on. Just don't be a bloody fool. She was caught half an hour ago here. Good. The man who was driving seems to have panic and he tried to crash through a roadblock. Do we know who he is? Man called Brewer. The CRO is doing a check now. Well, if you don't mind, sir, I'd like to be on my way. Uh, to see the girl? Well, she's. No, on sir, my this way man, to... Brewer, um, I would like to see him. I'm sorry, sir, I interrupted uh, you. Oh, that's quite all right. No, I would like to interview Brewer. He's of more interest to me at the moment, so if there is nothing else, sir. Uh, yes, Morrissey. Oh, and. Uh, Let me have his report as soon as you get it. Will I've you? got it, sir. Then why wasn't it passed on to me? Well, I thought I'd like to deal with that myself, sir. No, it's too late for that. The Commissioner's received a medical report, together with a letter from the man's solicitors, alleging that Morrissey uh, gave the man a cut lip and a badly bruised cheek. Sir, I know that that's the allegation. I've already spoken to Mr. Jordan. And? And, sir, I think that if we could keep it within the department... No, I'm afraid not. Look, let's leave it at that for the moment, will you? But I would like to see Morrissey's report. Yes. Where is Brewer now, sir? They're holding him at Stevenage at the moment. Anything from CRO yet on Brewer? Yes, sir. He's known, but not wanted. I have the file here. Good. The superintendent Inman will pick it up on his way out. Well, that's a break. They seem to have something on him. All right, sir. I'll be at Stevenage. Of course. It may turn out all right. What's that, sir? About Morrissey. Oh, yes, of course. Sit down. Thank you, Sergeant. My name is Inman. I'm a superintendent from Metropolitan Police. I've got nothing to say. Well, we'll see. You're going to be charged with helping Christine Morris to escape from prison, but that's not why I'm here. I just want to ask you a few questions. If you're charging me, you can't ask questions. I know the rules. You haven't been charged yet. Brewer Charles, born 1933. Quite a few entries, eh? I see you in the Royal Navy. Engine room, I tip for, sir. I don't think you saw the inside of many engine rooms, did you? Twelve months in the brig for striking a petty officer, then kicked out? I wasn't sorry. 
Six months West London last near of cash. Two months can count for taking and driving away. Two years at London sessions for robbery. I didn't rob anyone. I just drove the car, that's all. Yes, that seems to be your speciality, Mr Brewer, driving getaway cars. I see you've got three years for it at Bedford Assizes. You don't get away all that often, do you? I do all right. Sergeant, I wonder if I could trouble you. Could I have a cup of tea, please? Would you like one? Two cups of tea, please, sir. Uh, yes, now, what were you doing with this girl? I just picked her up. She was hitchhiking. I gave her a lift. Hmm. How was I to know she was on the run? You're lying. You're out of your league. This isn't shop breaking. You're not dealing with a county borough CID, no. I'm a special branch. Do you know what that means? I'm not interested in small-time thieves and petty larcenies. This is real trouble you're in, Mr Brewer. I don't know what you're on about. She waved me down and asked me where I was going. I said London and she jumped in. Somebody hired you. They told you to meet her near the prison and take her somewhere. Where? Thank you, Sergeant. Where were you taking her? Look, if I was doing a job and got nicked, I wouldn't talk anyway. Now, listen to me. I'm warning you. This isn't your ordinary kind of job. This is security. Do you understand? National security. Do you know what she was in for? It's got nothing to do with me. I don't get involved in you that kind of thing. You are involved in that kind of thing. I could charge you now under the Official Secrets Act. What for? So she was escaping. I've been nicked, but you can't pin spying on Willfully me. Willfully refusing to disclose to a superintendent of police any information you may have concerning a person who committed an offence under the Act. Section 7, Official Secrets Act. That could get you seven years. Seven years, Brewer. But I don't know anything. I, I didn't even know what she'd done. I'll tell you. She carried a document. She got five years for carrying a document. Now, where were you taking her? If I tell you what I know, will you drop the official secrets? Business? No. I'll do my best, but I make no promises. Where were you taking her? Highgate, the archway, near the hospital. A house, a pub? Just the archway. I was going to get paid off. Who by? I don't know. Who was going to pay off? I don't know. The off? bloke who hired me, I suppose. And he is who? I don't know. He, he rang me up. We met at a pub. Now, listen, Brewer, don't We met at a that. pub and he offered me £500 to pick her up and bring her to London. 200 down and the rest on delivery. <laughs> Wouldn't you do it for that kind of money? No name, no address? You don't this kind of job, you know that? What else? Well, he gave me the clothes, the wig and the glasses to disguise her. I mean, I had no idea she was a spy or anything. I just thought he wanted to get his bird out. You're letting your tea get cold. That's exactly how it happened. Sergeant! I want you to have this man that's helping you out in my office tomorrow morning. Oh. Sergeant, I'm going to have to get you out of here. Sergeant, I'm going to have to All right, Brewer, could you recognise this man if you saw him? Sure, I could recognise him. He still owes me the 300. But you didn't deliver, did you? Thank you, Sergeant. You're sure that's the man? Well, that's him. Brewer. You're in no doubt. That's him. That's the man in the pub. Miss Walsh, keep that one out. Thank you, Brewer. That's quite useful. Who is he? You're going to be taken back now and charged. But I've told you what I know. Yes, for the time being, you'll only be charged with the prison offence. Does that mean I'm off the hook about this secret stuff? We'll see. He's all yours. Who is he, Miss Walsh? I thought we'd never get to him. Ah, yes. Deputy Commander, please. Superintendent Inman. How oh, the hell is he? Sir? Inman here, sir. Um, the man who fixed Miss Morris's escape is called Piotr Romanovsky. Yes, sir. He's a gardener working for the Russian Diplomats Country Club in Kent. I think so, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. How the hell's the ardent me? Yes, you didn't know I could sing, Miss Walsh, eh? Yes, to see my boy. Piotr Romanovsky, a gentleman we've been aware of for some time. Really? He grows excellent roses. Anything else? He is a most capable gardener. I always find it fascinating how good these gentlemen are at their cover job. 
Pintable was a first-rate painter. Lonsdale made a healthy profit out of Pintables. Kroger was the most successful book dealer. And Romanovsky grows roses and pulls weeds, eh? I'd like to have congratulated you all in tying him in with Miss Morris's escape, but I'm afraid you've wasted your time. Why, Noxon? Because he isn't over here. Ah, oh, wait a minute. He works at the Diplomats Country Club. Worked, my dear fellow, worked. He left Britain on a midweek Aeroflot flight 11 days ago. Brewer positively identified him. I think you may well be exaggerating the importance of Miss Morris. As I recall the evidence, she was just the courier in the Troika business. But apparently important enough for one of their men to organise an escape. Come, your whole theory is based on the identification of one photograph by a crook out to save his skin. Who just happens to pick out a KGB agent known to you. Were they all security suspects who showed him? He was bound to pick out one. Not necessarily. I would be much more impressed if he'd picked out the one KGB man out of a collection of otherwise blameless people. Wouldn't stand up in court, you know. I know that. We weren't following court procedure. Quite so. If I may return to the point... Are you saying that the KGB is not behind this escape? She's just not important enough. All right, all right. Then who did set it up? That's your department. Gentlemen, you will have to excuse me. Or perhaps one of your colleagues in the CID. Maybe she has a wealthy boyfriend who missed her warm companionship. What, a risk out of jail just to get her out? Chemistry does strange things to people. I have 12 minutes to get to Grosvenor Square. Join me, gentlemen? Uh, no, no, thank, no, thank you. You. you know, I don't believe it. And I don't think he does either. Then why do you think he said it? Well, Moxon's no fool. He must have his reasons. Sir, I think we should go on with this. I propose to send Mr. Jordan to interview the Morris girl if you will authorise it. All right. Only this time, gentlemen, let's make sure Mr. Moxon doesn't find out. Who's your lady friend? Uh, that is Detective Constable Rogers. Oh, didn't you think you'd be safe on your own? Uh, why'd they put you in here? Because I banged my head on the steering wheel when that idiot panicked. Oh, that idiot was the one who said you panicked. Mind you, you know, you look, you look very healthy to me. Oh, don't worry. They'll soon have me in a cell. Oh, you are a mug, Christine. Who? Oh? Why? Well, now, I mean, you had, it all, you had it all made, didn't you? A nice, cushy prison without bars, chintzy curtains, afternoon tea... Number one diet in Holloway is not going to be any joke, you believe me. Well, at least it'll be different. Yeah. You were helped. To do what, Mr Jordan? Oh, now, come on, now. You know your escape. It was an open prison. There were no bars. You just walk out. Oh, you just walk out like that? Just like that. Mm. And you just happened to have a driver in a car waiting. I'd never seen him before in my life. He thought he was on to something good and I needed a lift to London... Very lucky he happened to be there. I'm born lucky, Inspector. Virgo. And, of course, he just happened to get into a panic when uh, he saw the police. Uh. He heard the news on the radio. He guessed who I was and he didn't want to be lumbered. Uh, and, of course, he just happened to have a blonde wig stuck away in the car. So, maybe he's kinky. Ah, elevensies. We know all about Pietro Romanovsky. Beef broth. To make me strong. Tomorrow, for being a naughty girl, they're putting me on bread and water for 21 days. Pietro Romanovsky. Now, come along now. We know he helped your escape. Tell me something. Uh, wasn't it a bit risky communicating with you? I've never heard of the gentleman. And you know damn well nobody communicated with me. You know, now, this is, this is for your own help now. Are you sure now there's nothing he want to say to me? Well, frankly, yes. Do you think you could see what you could do about getting me off that bread and water diet? It ruins a girl's figure. <laughs> yeah. Do you know, you, you are lucky. You, 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 you are lucky, you know. You're very lucky you're, you're not Andrew Harris. Who's Andrew Harris? Oh, Andrew Harris is a young uh, music student who went to Russia and uh, he sold a, a few things, you know, sweaters or something to a couple of fellas. And uh, the people for whom you worked called it black market speculating. 
So he's doing uh, Siberia. Five years. Oh, same as me. Yes, but the only difference is, you see, they're making him do work that's ruining his fingers. He was a very gifted pianist. So I, I don't think that uh, the bread and water diet is going to do you, Miss, much harm, Christine. So you are. You are bloody lucky. I told you, Inspector. I'm Virgo. She sounds as hard as nails. Yeah, you could say that again. She's not acting like a stupid little girl caught up on a spy ring. Oh, that's for sure. Otherwise, she'd be what? Full of tears, remorse, anxious to behave, make good, all that kind yeah, of stuff. Well, you think so. Instead of which, she walks out of a comfortable open prison and is quite cocky when she's recaptured. And she doesn't seem to mind now. It's Holloway maximum security. And why should the KGB bother to help her? What's she worth to them? I don't know. All she was was a, a messenger go between teaching ice skating. Where did she come from? Uh, Nottingham. Let me see her. Yes, yes, she was born Nottingham. Yeah. Orphan. No background history of any interest. What? No background history of any interest. None? No, sir. She had a boyfriend who sold information, and that's how she got involved. Uh, the American Air Station at East Anglia? That's yeah, the I one. That's the one. I don't believe it. I want a complete check on Miss Morris. Background, relations, school, everything. Superintendent Eden had it all checked out at the time of the trial. Well, we had better do it all over again. If the best we can come up with is no background history of any interest, I don't believe it. Do you? I want better than that. And Mr. Jordan, I want it quickly. Sir. Miss Walsh, could you come in, please? Sorry to drag you away like this. Oh, it's all right. How is she getting on? Oh, fine, fine. We often talk about Christine. She was very popular. Are you two friends? We saw quite a lot of each other. She gave lessons here every day. Did she have lots of boyfriends? One or two. Talk about them. Why are you asking all these questions? We had detectives here when it happened. They have the same thing. Oh, it's just routine. Keeping our files up to date, you know. Is it something to do with her escape? I read in the paper she'd been caught. Yeah, yes, she has. When will she come out now? Depends. Good conduct, you know, things like that. Well, if they let these Krugers out, I don't see why a poor kid like her has to stay in. I'm sorry I can't help. No, no, but you are, really. Listen, did you ever see her away from here? You know, parties, that sort of thing. No, not really. Christine kept her private life to herself. Yeah, sure. No, really, she wasn't the flighty type. I told you, a boyfriend or two, maybe. She's very pretty, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah. Did she ever talk about her family at all? Right, well. Actually, you should ask her. Sally and you are much better. Let's go and talk to her. <laughs> what did you say this girl's name was? Sally. Sally! <sighs> this is a detective from Scotland Yard. He's asking questions about Christine. Oh. Well, hasn't she had enough trouble? Oh, she's not in any trouble. Well, There's nothing new anyway. Just uh, asking a few routine questions. You know, uh, things like, did she go out a lot? Well, what's so special about that? I mean, if you're asking if Christine was a raver, then the answer's no. So you did not away from work, then? Well, I, I went to a birthday party last year. Oh, yeah? When was that? Uh, last August. Seems ages ago now. <laughs> Anybody else there you knew? No. Tough party. <laughs> <laughs> did you know her in uh, Nottingham, then? No, we met at a nice gala here. Uh. Did she ever talk about her parents? She's an orphan, you know. So she did talk about herself, then? Well, she talked about her skating and the gold medal she wanted to win, that sort of thing. You're going to make a report on all of this? <laughs> it's not really very much to report, is there? Well, she wasn't a Mata Hari, if that's what you're after. She was just a silly kid. Yeah. Oh, well, that's the way it goes, isn't it? Well, thanks very much, both of you. You've been very helpful. Well, if he calls that being helpful, he's easily satisfied. <laughs> it's no good, Eric. I have absolutely no choice. No, sir. Detective Constable Morris is suspended as of today. It'll be in departmental orders. Yes. Look, Alec, I hate this sort of business just as much as you do. But there's a tame MP making noises now. And the press will be onto it any day. We have to show them that an inquiry is being set up and that in the meantime... Morris is suspended. It's as simple as that. Sir, giving into this kind of pressure, isn't that prejudging him? 
It's one of the crosses a copper has to bear. Morrissey swears he was acting in self-defense. All the same, the complainant has produced two witnesses who say they saw Morrissey hit him. Now, has Morrissey any witnesses? None, sir. It's only his word. <sighs> oh, well, that's, that's for the inquiry to sort all that out. The trouble is that even if he's cleared, it may finish him in special brands. May even finish him in the force. Oh. Think of the people who jump at the story of a special branch officer assaulting a civilian. There may be compensation. There'll certainly be publicity. Oh, no, there's more than, than Morris's future at stake here, you know. Exactly, sir. That's why they'll hang him. That's also bloody unfair. Every time a copper gets into trouble, they, they scream for his blood. Even if he's cleared, they sneer and say, oh, well, it's the police sitting in judgment on one of their own men. What else can you expect? It's a hard way for Morrissey to find that out. Quite. Even so, I shall be... Yes. Sorry to interrupt, sir, but Nottingham Police are on the line for Superintendent Inman. They say it's urgent. Good. Right. I'll uh, take it in my own office. Something important? Yes, sir. I think so, sir. Six copies of this birth certificate in full. We'll post it to you in three days. No, I'm in a hurry. I need it this afternoon. I'm afraid that's quite impossible, sir. Detective Chief Inspector Jordan of Scotland Yard. Oh, I see. Well, in that case, Thursday. after lunch it is. Oh, hello, sir. I was on my way to lunch. Success? Well, nothing we didn't know. Huh? Well, the entry of her birth. Ah, yes. Well, I've ordered six copies of it. It should be ready about 2.30. Good. Born in Nottingham? Oh, uh, yes, sir. And the date? April the 24th, 1945. That's very interesting, isn't it? Why? In the report of your conversation with Miss Morris, didn't she say something about Virgo? Yes, sign of Virgo. She said she was lucky she was born under it or something. Luckier than you think. I'm not quite with you, sir. Well, if Miss Morris was born towards the end of April, her sign is Taurus. So? So why should she say... She's under Virgo, August into September. Well, maybe she preferred being a Virgo than a Taurus. No. People who attach importance to these things are usually very accurate about them. Have you read Morris's report? In it, he quoted a skating friend of Miss Morris as saying that she attended Christine's birthday party in August. August, Virgo. Tell me why a girl who was apparently born in April under Taurus should celebrate her birthday in August under Virgo. Well, women are very funny about their birthdays. You know what I think? I think our Miss Morris has a different birthday to the one on her birth certificate. Now, that's a very interesting guess. No, it's a fact. Now you've finished on the birth, I think you should start on the death. The death? I've had a call from Nottingham. Oh, my God. Christine Morris died when she was three years old. Have you eaten? Mm, no, sir, I haven't. Come on. You may leave us. Mm -hmm. Do sit down, Miss Morris. I hope you haven't kept you waiting. The traffic is rather heavy. I really didn't have another appointment. Ah. This is Mr. Kremitsky of the Soviet Embassy. How do you do, Miss Morris? Would you care to sit, sir? Thank you. I have some news for you, Miss Morris. Good news or bad, Mr. Moxon? That's for you to judge. The Soviet government has indicated that they're prepared to release a British student called Andrew Harris. There is one condition. They would like you in exchange. 
You, you will appreciate that it is a somewhat unusual situation. You are not a Russian national. We can in no way influence you. Would you be prepared to go to Russia? Definitely. We do not in any way seek to put pressure on you. There would be many problems for you over there. The language, for instance. That would be no problem, Mr. Moxon. There have been some very delicate negotiations, as you can imagine. We are anxious to get Mr. Harris back, but we do not in any manner force you to agree to such an arrangement. I have agreed. Here. Now. Do you wish time to think about it? No. Please. Be clear that no one seeks to influence you. You are serving a sentence which will clear your debt to society. We do not want to punish you further by making you go into some sort of exile. It will be no punishment, Mr. Moxon. You seem very sure about it. I am. We have told Mr. Kreminsky and his colleagues that their request is an unusual one. We cannot recall a precedent for exchanging a British subject for one of our nationals over there. However, they say if you are willing, they're happy. And so am I. Very well. I'm very grateful to you. I'm just the messenger boy, Miss Morris. Now then, Mr. Kreminsky will want to discuss the arrangements with you. They're insane. Not quite. Do you know who she really is? Miss Morris? She's not Miss Morris. That's the point. We don't know who she is, but she's not Miss Morris. That my people were beginning to be aware of. And all this time, secret negotiations have been going on to exchange her for, for, for that student? We're not complete fools, gentlemen. Do you think we would really exchange one British subject for another? Well, really? How long have you known she wasn't a British subject? We have then? suspected for some time what you seem to have uncovered at last, that the KGB planted a girl in England some years ago and she took the identity of a female who died as a baby. Well, that's it, then. We just sit back and do nothing. Not at all. We give them back one of their people in exchange for one of ours. But if Miss Morris is really a KGB plant, then she's very important, surely. I mean, this, this student's just a young ass. If we exchange her for him, that doesn't strike me as a very satisfactory bargain. It's the best deal we can get. And the usual pressure is mounting about young Harris. Protest meetings, petitions, letters to the Times. His aging parents on the telly. The authorities are very vulnerable to that kind of lobbying. I wonder why we always get the wrong end of the stick in these exchanges. All right, Jordan, that's hard to the point. Thank you, Deputy Commander. Sir, are we to go on with the inquiries? While they may uncover anything fresh, yes. Basically, we know the position. Now, this girl, Morris, is obviously an important agent. They want her back. Now, her people hired this man, Brewer, to help her escape. But if that went wrong, they were quite pre prepared to negotiate an exchange. So let's bear these facts in mind. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, sir. We'll get along if you've no further use for us. Okay. I can understand their sense of frustration. That's the understatement of the year. You know, I sometimes wonder whether you people are as devious as you make out or whether you cover up your blunders with this uh, aura of no old mystery. <laughs> My dear chap, that is unworthy of you. Uh, Scott. And water, please. Uh, all the same, this whole Troika affair from start to finish seems to have been won by the other side on points. Oh, I don't know. We may get a shoe factory out of it. <laughs> what? <laughs> We are negotiating with them for the installation of a four million pound shoe factory. It's a very big deal. It might even put us in the black for one month. What the hell is that to do with our work? The world is changing. Business deals are becoming as important as military secrets. HMG doesn't want anything to rock the boat at this moment. We're almost ready to sign the deal. But four million pounds, oh, really? More than the security services annual budget. You can't sneeze at that. You know, what you're really saying is that the price of this deal is the success of that exchange. Let's say that big fleas have little fleas. Anyway, the Russians need that factory. Have you any idea how rotten their shoes are? Uh, Morrissey! And where are you going? Home. Home? What do you mean, going home? It's ten past four. I'm suspended, sir. 
Or didn't they tell you? Oh, yes, yes. I'm uh, sorry about that. You don't have to be. You've threatened to do it to me often enough. Yes, but I never did it, did I? No. No, I'm sorry. I'm just fed up with all this. Well, no, don't worry about it. They will clear you, don't worry. I couldn't care less. I do my job and this is what I get. Some idiot lies his head off and they suspend me. Yeah, but you hit him. Of course I hit him. Three of them went for me. What was I supposed to do, run? Maybe. Yeah, well, that's not why I joined the force, sir. Now, tell me, Morrissey, tell me, why did you join her? Oh, now, come on, now, tell me, what did you get out of it? I'll tell you what I got out of it. Eighteen-hour days, a load of paperwork, no days off, a kick in the belly and all for a thousand quid a year. Make a fine recruiting. Yeah, well, that's the way I feel, sir, and that's why I'm resigning. Now, look, don't be bloody stupid. You sit out the inquiry, don't well, you do I don't do give anything. a damn. I'm going to get myself a nine-to-five job. Then I can write letters to the papers about officious coppers. Listen, if you resign, that's going to make you look as guilty as hell. What you hope have I got? It's a foregone conclusion anyway. What's what a foregone you... conclusion, Morrissey? I, I, I'm sorry, sir, I didn't see you there. Evidently. Well... What's a full gun Well, he not thinks the inquiry's so. already made up his mind. The inquiry morning. hasn't even started yet. Don't indulge in self-pity, Morrissey. I'm suspended, sir. Well, it's not the end of the world. Do you know that there's a club in the Metropolitan Police whose members have all had complaints against them and they've all been cleared? They even have their own tie. Did you know that? You may be wearing it yet. Anyway, I want you to come with me. But I'm suspended, sir. I know that. Come on. Where are we going, sir? The cinema. The less publicity, the better, of course. Yes, indeed. Unfortunately, it'll be headlines all over the place. A story like that, that be... There are times when I envy our friends in the KGB. They don't have to worry about Pravda turning up at Moscow Airport and putting its great big feet into it. You know, Inman spent a couple of years in Washington, acting as our liaison officer with the FBI. Well, they were always telling him how lucky we are. I mean, they haven't even got the Official Secrets Act to help them. The CIA does all right. And sometimes. So do we, usually. Look, Charles, this, um, this student Harris we're getting in exchange, he really is just a, a young fool, isn't he? I mean, there's no more to him than that. Flog two Marks and Sparks Woolies to a couple of students. That's an economic crime in their book, and economic crime carries the death penalty. Stupid fellow. Uh, rather convenient for them to have him handy for exchange. And rather awkward for us. Yes, that definitely was them, you know, sir. All right, we'll see. Look, could you run that last, oh, about what, 30 seconds? I think so. The last 30 seconds again? Well, be a moment, sir. Thank you. How did you know about this, sir? Well, I didn't, but I know that they always shoot lots of extra footage that never gets released. It was worth trying. Ready now, sir. Right. There they are. Mm. Right, thank you. That's fine. Thank you. Now, oh, I would like to uh, borrow that last bit of film and I'll send someone to take a statement from the cameraman that filmed it. This doesn't mean trouble, does it? No, 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 on the contrary. I think it might get somebody out of trouble. Oh, we're ready to help, sir? Oh, no, no, you've been a great help. Thanks very much. I'm very grateful, sir. No, you're just very lucky. They happen to have filmed your little battle. Well, what happens now, sir? Well, they produce their witnesses. We show the film. Do you think I should sue them, sir? I wouldn't have I with you, not if you want to stay in special branch. Why can't I? I didn't say you can't. I said it might be wiser if you didn't. But they made a false accusation, sir, and I can prove it now. It would be wiser to do nothing. Because we don't have a face. We don't get involved in public. That's special branch. Yeah. That's bloody unfair, sir. Yes, it is. Oh, thank you, sir. Now, if there's anything we can do, uh, like uh, putting a policeman on the door to stop reporters, and you let me know. I'm sure we'd be all right. Very kind of you to call. Oh, not at all. Would please. you like another cup of tea, no, Mr. Jordan? No, thank you very much, no. Special branch, eh? Yes, sir. Do you like the job, son? Well, you know, it's a job like any other. Well, I would have thought it was a bit nasty. Why should it be nasty? Oh, you're political, aren't you? You spy on the workers, sneak into union meetings, and all that sort of thing? What? 
I wouldn't have quite put it that way. You mustn't take too much notice of my husband. I watch you. You, you really, both of you, must be terribly thrilled about your son coming home. I'll be glad when he's really out of that place. Yeah. You worry too much, Mother. The lad's all right. The Soviets won't harm him. Oh, you've been to Russia, sir? No. If I had, you'd have it in your files, wouldn't you? I don't see why. Look, I'm not blaming you, son. I suppose it's because you've been in the political police and directing traffic in Lorraine. Your son was arrested by the Russians on a trumped-up charge, sir. Well, I wouldn't know anything about that because I wasn't there at the time. All I know is that they're sending him home. Well, the facts are that we're exchanging your son, who did a very, very silly thing in Russia, for one of their agents who was caught carrying classified documents. I mean, they, the, the Russians just used your son as a pawn in, in some bargain. Look, I've read more about the Soviet Union than you have, son. The trouble is, you don't understand their system. Their si well, I can assure you, sir, if it suited their system, they'd keep your son in a labour camp and then they, they'd retry him and uh, they'd start all over again. That's what you say. Well, goodness, look, look at the time. I uh, really must be going. Now, <clears throat> the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, sir, the Foreign Office will be in touch with you about uh, times of arrivals and everything like that. Thank you. Goodbye, friend. Good day, sir. Oh, no, it's a pleasure, really. Give me Central alone. Central Registry, give me 2193, will you? Oh, fine, this is Jordan here. What? Hello, Willie. Yes, I'm fine, thank you. I'm good. Look, Willie, I want you to get everything you've got on the Harris family. That's right. You know that Andrew Harris, the one that's being exchanged? Fine. Now, the fo What? I'm going to give you the details and I... No, 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 no. Look, Willie, I'll, uh, I'll come over and get them myself. Now, I'm going to be here. Be here until you call, all right? Now, look, this is very urgent, Willie. Yes. Mr. Jordan wants to see you, sir. And straight away, then. I'm in a hurry, Jordan. Sir, I'll be as brief as I can. Mm -hmm. I think we're being shortchanged. What do you mean? Well, you know the Harris boy we're exchanging today? I believe he's a communist. What makes you think that? Well, I saw his parents yesterday evening. Now, his father is more communist than the Morning Star. This man's old guard. He's pre Czechoslovakia, pre Hungary. And young Andrew, he must have been weaned on that stuff from birth. Fact. Have you anything on it? No, nothing. I checked all night through Central Registry, nothing. He's probably never been important enough or ever done anything illegal. Pointless. The Russians arrested him, now he's being exchanged. The only hope we've got is that he'll come back a disillusion communist. Well, that is one possibility. Is there another one? Yes, there is. Suppose this whole thing is a setup. Yeah, go on. Well, we arrest the Morris girl, right? The KGB, they want her back very badly, but they've got no one to exchange her for. So young Andrew, Comrade Andrew, goes back to Russia on orders and gets himself conveniently arrested on some charge or other. And then we are fed all these hair-raising stories, terrible life. And we fall for it. It's very appealing. They get back their agent and give us, in return, one of their recruits. It's a good theory, Jordan. Have you any proof? None. Have you any proof at all? None whatsoever. Yes. Your car is waiting, sir. The Morisco has been flown to East Berlin this morning. Come on. Get through to Central 11. See what time they left Holloway. Very good, sir. Are we expecting the press? No, there'll be a press release an hour after she leaves. Well, that's a blessing. Convoy left two hours ago. That means they'll be here any minute. Well, if we're willing to let her go on, they're willing to have her. There shouldn't be any snags. Yes, sir. What's your opinion, Mr. Moxon? Oh, Jordan's little theory. Very ingenious. Yes, but what are you going to do about it? Nothing at all. But you realize this could be a double cross. Yes, Chief Inspector. It may well all be. 
Central 11, sir. They're coming through the side there. Jordan. He knows, you know, and I know. But. Goodbye, Mr. Jordan. Goodbye. Uh, the uh, bread and water diet doesn't seem to have affected you, Miss Morris. Oh, you are still Miss Morris. Yes, I am. I've got rather used to it. I trust you had everything you wanted. Almost everything, Mr. Mox. We are waiving passport formalities. I see. What I mean is... What you mean is that I don't have a British passport anymore. Well, under the circumstances... Under the circumstances, I don't really need one, do I? Все хорошо, что хорошо кончается. Теперь дымой в Москву? Да, и дыма течет с моим сладок и пьяким. Мистер Краминский agrees. I don't really need one anymore, do I? Товарищ Пора. 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 Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Please look me up if you ever get to Moscow. Gentlemen. should be having lunch in East Berlin. You sound as if you wouldn't mind having it with her. Wouldn't you, sir? Harris lands at Heathrow in half an hour. Cut to see a bear of thought. The poor innocent snatched from the jaws of the KGB. What are you going to do about it? Public opinion won't let us do anything. They imagine us making life difficult for the poor lad after what he's supposedly been through. It crucifies. Where's Jordan? Well, there goes one half of your bargain. file on him. After you, Mr. 